Hi guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're going to continue our review of castable resins, and today I'm going to cover the Anycubic Green Castable Dental Resin. We're going to go through this and show you how my parts turned out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit the share button. Any little help you give me helps my videos grow. Thanks for watching, and let's check out the video. Well, what I decided to do was try two uh, men's rings, and they are 20 millimeter diameter hole, which is approximately uh, a size 11. And I wanted to see how well the castable resin would print the, uh, what I did was a US Navy logo recessed, and I would probably cast this in silver and put some epoxy in here to fill that in, maybe some deep blue to uh, offset that insert. That way it doesn't collect dust or dirt. But I want to take a look at, at how these printed. This resin printed a little bit better, actually much better, than the iPhone castable resin. And it uh, didn't take me nearly as long to figure this out. I did follow the instructions that were on the bottle, and I'll show you a picture of those. Those did not work well for me. I had to uh, bump up the settings in the Elegoo Mars to get this to print well. Um, what I did notice is that uh, a couple things. This resin is very brittle, and one of the things that I wanted to cover here, and I've printed a bunch of these and done some tests, so I'm going to show you basically what happens when you try to trim off these little pieces. Let me get the cutters. And let's start trimming this up. So I've got this piece here. We're going to save this other one just in case. Uh, before I start trimming, let's take a look at uh, how this printed from, from the top down. You can see wherever I have a support that we get some, some errors in the print, a little waving, uh, not noticeable on the opposite side. So if we look at this side, this printed very good. Um, I didn't get any errors in the print. You can see it's very sharp. That was just the way I, I designed the piece. And uh, not to worry because I will file this down before this actually would go to casting. But this concerns me because it gives me a little extra work to do on this side. For some reason I'll have to uh, file that down and make it a little better. But yeah, well, I probably could have got away with maybe uh, I used a 15 second, uh, 14 or 15 second layer exposure time. And I did this at 0.04 millimeters, and I probably could have uh, maybe bumped that exposure time up to 18 or 19 seconds and gotten a little less waviness because I do notice a little air here and uh, a little one here. So when you see it on the side, on the good side, it came out fine. But on this side, we've got some kind of an indent like it was shrinking while it was trying to uh, cast the piece. That could have been just lack of support there. Who knows? Um, but I imagine a little longer exposure time would have worked out well. Let's cover the other option, or the other thing that concerns me a little bit, and that's the fact that when you trim these, because this resin is so brittle, um, I almost get cracking in the piece. And I'm just going to try to do this very gently. Let's try not to crack these pieces at all. Step, step, step. Just a little bit at a time. Work my way around very gently. And again, I'm trying to do this carefully so that I don't cause any cracking of the piece because this is brittle. Uh, my fear is that uh, I will actually do more damage to the piece than. Here, that should come right off. Okay, so now I've got this piece pretty much cleaned up. And I'm just going to pull these little pieces off a little bit, and you can see uh, how my support tips are still there. Again, I think the best way to handle that is to uh, just gently file it down with a fine file, and I like to use. Uh, 
see here I've got a nice fine file and we'll just kind of shave these off just ever so slightly. Now again we're going to take a look at this and you can see where I didn't have maybe good support or exposure time long enough on this side as it printed we had some shrinkage with the resin but this side printed fine so I may redo these prints or I would recommend redoing this with a longer exposure time like I said I did 14 or 15 seconds I would probably bump that up to uh, maybe 19 seconds on this and uh, I think that would alleviate some of the warping that I got in that print. I just don't like the way that looks. And if I wanted to use this piece now I have to sand this flush and then come down and sand this part to match. And that's a little bit of work but it can be done. Keep that piece. So let's take a look at the detail. Again I did uh, this ring is a US Navy ring and My middle finger, let's see what size this turned out to be. A ring stick. Size 10. It's about what I was looking for. I was hoping to get an 11 out of it, but by the time I'm done sanding it up, it'll end up being a size 10 and a half. Now, I had this bottom part of the shank measured out at 1.4 millimeters and let's take a look and see how that came out we're at 1.36 so on my computer I had 1.4 millimeter and that just came out a little bit on the thin side on that I would prefer to see that at like one and a half millimeters the inside diameter is approximately 20 millimeters so let's check and see what that turned out to be Yeah, not bad, 20 millimeters, that's good enough. So there you can see, uh, it, it actually came out pretty good. And I had almost no error in this print. I think with some sanding and filing to this side down and then matching this side to it, this will actually be a good castable piece. And maybe we'll use this for a good test cast. If we look close enough, you can see the layer lines in there. And... <clears throat> <clears throat> One of the other issues that I noticed was that uh, I got some ridge marks. Now, I'm not sure where they came from, but if we look close enough here, maybe you can see it. I hope the camera picks it up. But there's a small ridge line right there, uh, like an indent. And I'm not sure where that came from. It showed up on both pieces, approximately the same place. And I don't know if it was just my STL file or if it was just something with the printer. Maybe it uh, got jarred during that part of the print. The detail in the Navy logo and the USN came out really good. Uh, it's tough when you are using resin or uh, because I can't really get in here and polish this area here. And I'm scratching a little bit. That's okay. We'll finish that when we get the piece done. So when this is cast, I'm going to get all those little lines underneath there. I could probably buff that out with some rubber wheels and get that polished up. The outside of the ring shank actually will end up being perfect. Uh, not out of casting, but since we have to finish the piece anyhow, um, I can make that nice and smooth during the polishing stage. Here's the uh, sheet 2 box uh, slicer that I use to get these two rings printed and you can see how I printed them. I printed them at approximately a 30 degree angle. Put in some heavy supports. If you take a look over here, I've got the heavy supports for the platform and the uh, raft. And you can see that I've got these all sliced up pretty good. When I went to my printer settings, I decided to use uh, I, I did, okay, so here you can see I use a 15 second exposure time. I would recommend bumping that up to 19 seconds to give you some um, better print quality so you don't get that warping on the uh, underside with the supports contact piece. That's my recommendation for that. So you can see layer height 0.04 millimeters, bottom layer count 5, exposure time for each layer 19 seconds, and the bottom five layers 
uh, for the un for the anycubic castable resin should be at about 90 seconds each. That seemed to be uh, the best adhesion I could get, and it gave the rafts enough support where they just pop off uh, when I scrape them off. So these settings worked really good. You can see I've got that set up as the uh, anycubic castable resin. So add that to your profile to get this resin, and that would be the best slicing settings for these. I'll just run through the slice here. Now again, these pieces are approximately uh, size 10. Uh, they do have uh, it's about a 28 millimeter height. So when we look at this, we should be able to get, uh, here we go, five hours, 26 minutes and 19 seconds. And we're going to use approximately uh, 9.5 grams. The cost of this, I've got this in the cost, it's $1.50 for these pieces to print. Okay, so let me conclude with how much I really like this resin. Other than the fact that it's pretty brittle and you have to be careful when you're cutting off your supports, um, if you make delicate parts with this, it will break easy. So keep that in mind. Uh, the resin prints very, very, very well. I think uh, I think most resins from any cubic print really good. And the settings that I used here printed almost all of my models without any issues. So if you decide to do some castable resin, uh, resin and castable items to make into jewelry or anything else, uh, I really recommend this. This is some good stuff. So I'm going to keep this in my repertoire and I hope you do too. There'll be a link to get this resin in the description below and on my website. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. Any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care guys, happy watchmaking and jewelry making.